As I was just reading the series, I had a thought come into my mind. I think Maki should surpass Toji at some point. Not just be his equal, but truly surpass him. I don't think a lot of people are going to be fans of this video essay at first. And to be honest, I'm not either. I love Toji. He's one of my favorite characters in the series. But there's a reason why he's one of my favorite characters. And a small part of this is because he's a badass and all that. But the biggest reason, it's just not as simple as the first. It even ties into why I believe Maki should surpass Toji. So why not wrap all that into a video, right? I never spoke about Maki on this channel either, surprisingly enough. So I think making this video is the perfect opportunity to hit many birds with one stone. With that being said, let's get into it. As we know, both Toji and Maki have faced heavy discrimination and abuse from the Zeni clan due to being born with the heavenly restriction rather than respective curse techniques. Curse techniques within Jujutsu society is akin to a status symbol, with some being so prized that if you are to possess them, you'd automatically become a future head of your clan or at least have a strong chance at getting it in the event that someone else held a prize technique as well. But in terms of similar upbringing, that's about it. Maki would eventually choose to leave her clan while staying within Jujutsu society as a grade 4 so she can attempt to take over the Zeni clan in the future. Meanwhile, Toji on the other hand didn't leave home until he was a grown ass man in his 30s, then chose to leave after meeting Megami's mother. I think something interesting to point out is that Maki despite not having the raw power to do so at the moment, chose to rebel against her clan directly, and Toji did not do anything despite always having the strength to. I do believe that Mai's existence plays a role in Maki's actions, as Maki didn't just outright leave because Mai was still there and you know she wanted to save Mai and all that. However, this does display that Maki in terms of mental fortitude always stood above Toji. She refused to allow her and her sister to be treated the way they were, whereas Toji simply accepted it, likely because he had nobody to protect at the time. Eventually, their stories with the Zenin end with Toji perpetuating the behavior of the clan by choosing to not raise his child in a way that stands against their beliefs, but instead selling him to them, which only strengthens their beliefs. This being due to how incompetent he finds himself to be as a person and potentially a father, whereas Maki comes to regain her full strength and slaughter the entire clan. This was due to them emotionally breaking her by eliminating Mai, ending their behavior, and even then, she still has much work to do. So now that I've gone over the brief refresher, I just want to talk about Maki and Toji as characters. First, when Maki destroyed the Zeni clan, she finally fulfilled what most people expected out of her, reaching Toji's level of strength. This was foreshadowed since the Shibuya incident that this was going to happen and that's clear. But what confuses me is, people say that's all she's become, Toji 2.0. I've sat down and thought on this point specifically and I'm even going to say this to those who believe this. You understand her at a surface level at most and I believe that is the point. The obvious similarities and exterior features may have been done on purpose as a meta commentary by the author himself to put readers who refuse to or can't see past the obvious in the same bin as all of the ignorant Zenin who saw Maki as no more than a failure due to her surface level attributes such as no cursed energy or technique. And Gege seems to do this with his characters as a test. For example, most of the cast identifies Gojo first and foremost as the strongest, alongside 70% of viewers saying that Gojo should come back and have this spectacular final battle of the gods with Sukuna. Despite him finally being happier than ever that he was relieved of the burden of not only being known as the strongest, but to have one final moment as Gojo Satoru and Gojo Satoru alone, nothing else. It's easy to write off Maki as Toji 2.0, but when you truly take a glance at her and her accomplishments as of recent, she's everything that Toji couldn't be and has always wanted to be. She fights for more than herself and has found the correct way of doing so. Choosing to destroy the system that oppresses her in a similar way to Gojo so it can truly be corrected and changed from the inside permanently. Well at least until she had no other choice but to eradicate the clan. Toji in my opinion never really gave himself a chance and allowed himself to be treated the way he was treated. The only time he seemed to be on the right path is when Megami's mother was involved and soon after she passed away he became an even more terrible person who lived for the past and ran away from the future, abandoning his own children. Toji lived a miserable life and it was because he never truly tried to fight for himself. He suffered abuse and allowed that to define and control him, eventually puppeteering him to his death against Gojo who he felt the need to prove his value toward despite Gojo having nothing to do with Toji's imaginary beef 
except for being the figurehead that was propped up by the society around them. This society of Jujutsu sorcerers that he despises so much ultimately won over him in the end. And as he said it himself, I wanted to discredit it, to crush it, the pinnacle of the Jujutsu world and the Zenin family. I wanted this for self-affirmation, and I deviated from my true self. At that point, I had already lost. I thought I had set aside such petty pride. Truth is, this conflict was one-sided, as Gojo never had any idea of anything like this going on past the fact that he was just defending himself and others in this arc. In an interesting parallel though, Maki as of recent chapters is facing down not only the pinnacle of the Jujutsu world, but history itself. It was even openly acknowledged by him as the only person to ever put him in a role. As he witnesses her efforts before him, he truly had to ask himself if he's been down the correct path of strength all along. If Heavenly Restriction truly stands next to Jujutsu as a whole. Sukuna so questioning this obviously displays the ignorance of those who doubted her, as the man who has broken the limits of Jujutsu is giving her the stamp of approval. With the open acknowledgement of a Jujutsu sorcerer that stands so far above the rest, she did destroy the ideals of the Zenin if people didn't believe so already. Maki in this battle does not even seem to be thinking about the Zenin and what they have done to her either, because this fight isn't about her. It's not about getting back at those in the power system that have done her wrong, it's about protecting the people in the world she loves, and she's going to do everything within her ability to engage in this battle and do so, while not allowing her thoughts to be clouded by anything else such as her trauma and insecurities. Toji on the other hand, could not do anything but feed into them, as he decided to continue fighting Gojo despite every fiber in his being telling him not to do so. As we know, Heavenly Restriction users cannot fight at their full capacity when their minds are clouded with thoughts that trouble them. And this is what happened to Toji at the very moment he decided Gojo as the strongest sorcerer of his time. And thus, his pain and insecurity dragged him into an early grave and made him choose to clash with Gojo instead of retreating like he always should have. He made the battle one to prove the world wrong instead of one to complete a mission. He destroyed fate at the cost of his life, but despite this, he lived a completely miserable life no matter how you want to spin it. When comparing the two, I have come to believe that Maki deserves to leave Toji behind because she has shown that she's overall a more powerful person. She's never allowed herself to be defined by her own trauma. No matter what circumstances Maki was dealing with, she had always chose to push forward and move on for the sake of those around her. She stood within the society and vowed to change it by gaining strength and eventually taking over the clan rather than becoming a sorcerer killer and hunting them down for pay. Even when given the opportunity that Toji once had to prove Jujutsu wrong, she is not thinking about that at all, and the only time she displays desperation within this battle is when she believes that Sukuna is going to regenerate before Yuta can come back, putting everybody and everything in danger. This displays that she prioritizes the well-being of her friends in the world before addressing any troubles that she's quite frankly probably not even interested in anymore. Sukuna is even the one bringing up this clash of bone and flesh instead of her, marrying how Toji was the one who was thinking about it while fighting Gojo. Maki is an example of growing past trauma as a person and moving on from it, whereas Toji has allowed it to define him and destroy himself. And these two paths that these characters took are what make them unique and interesting in their own rights. I love Toji because of his self-destructiveness. Despite all of his badass quotes and scenes throughout the story, one should never aspire to be anything like him. He's a cautionary warning to those who live their lives for the sake of proving something to others, whereas Maki displays the opposite. She displays the correct way to go about these things, and an answer to freedom from your own insecurities, shortcomings, and trauma. Maki tells you to do what you can do to the best of your ability, and to be okay with that because only you can do exactly what you can do. You have a role like all others, and it's okay to play it no matter how grandiose or how others see it. And to reiterate, Toji's character again tells you to never live your life trying to prove something to others because when you're placed in that position, they'll have complete control over you no matter how far you come or what you accomplish. When you lead such a life, you'll never truly be free. Their stories tell me to become the person who writes their own story, unswayed by the judgments of others rather than the one who allows the world to dictate their narrative. I want to close out this video saying that this wasn't to disrespect Toji or anything like it. Him being a cautionary character is why I find him to be great. There's truly an important lesson for many to learn from him. With that being said, thank you so much for watching guys, and I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace out.